Well, as you can see, our Gale 4640 is smoking really bad. So I got this machine really cheap from the company because they're thinking maybe it's a bad engine. But I'm going to go over some things that I looked at, you know, to try to troubleshoot why this thing was smoking. And I'm actually right in the middle of pulling the injectors out. So what I wanted to show you is I got two injectors out and I'm about to pull the third one out. But the reason we're looking at a Gale today instead of a Bobcat is that this Gale actually uses a Deutz engine, an oil-cooled engine similar to the Bobcats, like the uh, 863s, 864s, um, 873s, T200s. You know, we all use that four-cylinder um, oil-cooled Deutz engine, which is pretty cool. I really like that engine. I'm, and I did a video a while back on doing a timing belt on it. But what's unique about this, this is a three-cylinder Deutz, but it's almost identical to the four-cylinder Deutz um, engines, you know, in the Bobcat. So this is a three cylinder and the read, that's, that's kind of why we're looking at, you know, a smoking problem because not just a three cylinder, of course, would be smoking, but this is a troubleshooting procedure I use for all machines that, that smoke like this. So let's take a look in the engine compartment, kind of what I've already done to try to troubleshoot this issue. So right in this area on the gill is where the cooling package would be. And like I said, this is an oil cooled engine. So I had to pull the whole entire oil cooler out and I had to pull the fan assembly off because what I'm doing is I'm getting down here to this corner. What I want to do is I want to inspect the timing belt because if these get out of time just a little bit, they will smoke really bad like that. So I went ahead and pulled the cover off and looked at the timing belt. It actually looks really good. It's tight and I went ahead and put the pins in the engine, the timing pins, and it's actually perfectly in time. Another thing I did is I, you know, pulled the intake boot off the turbo here and we we checked the shaft on the turbo. I went ahead and opened up the intake manifold and I checked the inside of the intake manifold for oil because if the turbo goes bad, oil will get inside the engine and, uh, and it'll smoke like that. But, but the turbo is good. There's no oil inside the intake. So the smoke must be coming from somewhere else. So now what I'm in the process of doing is pulling the injectors out. Now I've got two injectors out here and these were a real bear to get out. I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it. So I've still got the uh, number one injector. See, the Deutz engine starts from the flywheel side of the machine for the engine, uh, the cylinder counts. So this is one, two, and three. And consequently, the four cylinder would be the same way. One, two, three, four. So this is just a straight pin type injector and they just get rusted and, and corroded and they get stuck down in that bore. So. What I've got is I've got different slide hammers for injectors and, and you'll see this a lot. People use slide hammers, but this one's really cool because it's got a collar here that'll fit both the M12 and the M14 um, threaded injectors. And this is an M12. So what we'll do is we'll just slot, you know, screw that slide hammer right on top of the injector and we'll just slide hammer it out of the bore. And it took some work to get these two out. Let's see how this uh, number one injector comes out. and I actually let these uh, injectors soak in some penetrant oil, you know, for a day or two before I started trying to pull them out. So I don't know if it helped or not, but I couldn't get them out without this slide hammer. I just put the collar of the slide hammer on hand tight and then we just start back. Oh, that one just popped right out. Still not bad at all. And then on the bottom of the injectors, we got to make sure this copper seal actually came out and it looks like it is still attached to the bottom of this injector because our new ones come with this um, copper seal fire ring, compression ring, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we just got to make sure the old one comes out. So now that I've got all three injectors out, you know, but before I um, use the slide hammer method, I um, sometimes on engines, what I'll do is if, if I can't quite get the injector out, I'll use engine compression to kind of push that injector out. And you got to be careful because it is building compression in there. And these, I've seen these shoot off like missiles. Sometimes they'll just pop right out, especially when you do it by hand. So I was just turning the engine over by hand, trying to use engine compression. You know, it'll kind of get up under this and I'll just kind of push it up a little bit and then we can slide those injectors out. And a lot of times that works. And what's unique is I was turning this engine over and none, none of these would move out. But as I was turning the engine over, you know, this is where in the injector line goes on top of the injector and it was bubbling out the end 
of the injector on the compression stroke. And I was like, well, how is that possible? Because if that panel in the bottom of the injector is closed, I mean, the engine compression can't come back up through the injector. So that immediately told me, oh, wow, maybe that's where our smoking problem's coming from. Let's see if we can see this. Um, this is one and two injector tips. They actually look pretty good. I'm replacing all three injectors. That's why I went ahead and pulled them all out. But let's look at the number three injector tip. Let's see if you can see this. Yep, right there on the end of it. Maybe you can see. Yep, see the end of the injector tip is completely blown off. And I've seen injector tips blown off and melted down and usually the cause of that is water. What happens is water will get in there and it, it turns into steam in the end of the uh, injector tip and it's just a, an, an explosion inside of there. And it doesn't look like this machine's been serviced in a long time, you know. Um, I checked the fuel filter, it's all rusted and stuff. It looks like it's been on there for a really long time, but there wasn't really any water or anything in the um, fuel filter that I could see. I don't know if maybe somebody drained it before I got the machine, but I am gonna do a full service on it. But I just thought that was pretty neat that um, you know, that's, that's more than likely, I'm very confident that that's where our smoking problem is coming from because uh, this injector just flooding, it's just pouring diesel in there. So all that smoke we saw coming out, and that's kind of a common misconception that someone thinks, well, the, the smoke is white or gray or black. If it's black, it's fuel, you know, but if it's completely unburned fuel, if it's just wet stacking fuel into that cylinder, that comes out white like that. And you'll see that on 18 wheeler. If you ever seen a big truck or a big engine blowing out white smoke, it'll literally melt a whole entire piston down. It'll destroy an engine. So if you ever see that, you want to shut it down as quickly as you can. I don't think this was run very much within this condition. Um, in other, and, and I was actually pulling the injectors out to do a compression te test when I found that, because I'll do the compression test with these, um, I got a little adapter that goes down in there. But I didn't think that it was a compression issue because it actually starts and actually runs fairly decent. There's just a lot of smoke coming out. So I didn't think it was compression and luckily before I did a compression test, I saw it blowing out the end of that and we know we got a busted injector tip. So let's go ahead and get the new injectors in and get this machine put back together and see how it runs. All right, well, I saved you the pain of watching me put it back together, but I do have it all assembled now. So let's see if it'll fire off and what happens. So what do I expect to happen with new injectors is I don't expect it to fire off immediately because we got to get that fuel into those injectors. I might even have to crack some lines and bleed some air out of these injectors to get them to start popping and firing. Um, I do expect to see a little smoke because of the uh, residual in the engine and probably in the exhaust, but I expect it to clear up pretty quick. So let's see if it'll start. It might even have a dead battery. I don't know. There we go. Come on, baby. About what I expected and the reason is is I forgot to turn the fuel back on <laughs> let's, let's try that again <clears throat> that was a lot of smoke but that's like I said that's kind of what I expect on a engine that was smoking that bad and put new injectors in it glow plugs one more time
Well, I think as it warms up and it burns all that stuff out of the cylinders and kind of out of the exhaust, that the, the smoke is gonna clear up. I do hear kind of like a metallic type um, clicking in the engine. I mean, hopefully I don't have any problems in the engine, but I very well may. Because like I said, when those injectors break off like that and it's flooding, depending on how long it was run, it could have done some damage to that piston. So I probably should have went ahead and did the compression check. But it just starts and runs so good. So I'm going to let this burn off for a little while and we'll come back and check it in a few minutes. Well, she's been running for about 10 minutes now and a lot of that smoke has went away. I mean, you can see a little hue of smoke coming out, but that's kind of typical for these older Deutz engines. And that ticking went away too. It might have been just extra fuel on top of one of the pistons or that number three piston. But now that it's kind of burned off and everything's warmed up, I mean, she is running perfect. So that's a neat little way to, um, or that's my method, I guess, to look at um, what may be causing an engine to smoke like that, where when I bought the machine, you know, they thought maybe it needed a whole new engine, uh, six, $7,000 probably. Well, that engine's probably 5,500 reman, but um, it turned out just to be injectors. So I got about $400 worth of injectors in there and she's running like a new one. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.